Hi, I'm Adam C and welcome to my relatively standard Toyota Chaser and the 10 things that I would recommend you do to your Chaser, which basically means this is my shopping list for what I want to do with mine. Obviously, we already know I've already done a cheap skatey thing. I've put my Nissan's wheels on the Toyota and even kept the Nissan's center caps on the car. I will eventually get some wheels, but that will come up a little bit later in the video. So these are the top 10 things that I want to do to my Chaser that I would recommend you to do with your chaser having been pretty much the chaser expert of the scene for the last five to ten years and when i say expert that's that's taken very lightly i i don't know as much as i would like to about these cars i just think they look good they sound good and they are legendary and everyone loves them so modification number one we're keeping things very simple to begin with and that is a sun strip across the top of the windscreen. If it's a white car, a white sun strip. If it's a black car, well, actually, chasers never actually came in black. They're really dark greens. If it's a really dark green chaser, then a really dark green sun strip, etc., etc. In my opinion, the body color should be matched to the sun strip, and that's coming from someone who has a yellow Nissan with a black sun strip, but black can work as well. But personally, I think a white sun strip on the white chaser would look good, so maybe down the line, I might get that sorted. You'll also notice I've got a bit of a tint to the windows. I I'm gonna address that soon as well. Modification number two is this little thing over here. And I do mean little. This is the standard Tura V spoiler that you get on the chasers from factory. And I don't like it. I'm gonna rip this off. That's the plan. So mod number two is to take the spoiler off. It seems backwards. Normally a spoiler would be a mod, but in my opinion, chasers look much better with a nice smooth and flush boot lid. Maybe a ducktail, or if it is a proper race car, then a, then a massive one. But when often do you see the race car type of chaser? Normally it's a show car type of chaser these days. Now we continue around the rear to mod number three, and that is the exhaust. Now, my one has a bit of an armadillo exhaust. That is what I like to call it. But this exhaust was made to suit the Vertex body kit, which is what the previous owner wanted to put on the car. So the Vertex kit should house that exhaust quite nicely and it won't look as ridiculous. So we'll come onto body kits in a bit, but I'm gonna wait till I address that issue until I address this issue. But a good exhaust is essential to listen to the two and a half liter 1JZ straight six. This is a full custom exhaust. It's just the tip that visually doesn't look great with the standard Tura V bumper. It would be rude for me not to let you listen to the exhaust whilst talking about the exhaust. It doesn't flame, although I've heard a pop once. Everyone's so obsessed with pops and bangs, but when a car doesn't have that map to hear a pop, it's like, oh, it did a pop. But I don't know whether it was a flame because obviously I was driving, but it would be more of a splurge. But a healthy 1JZ shouldn't really be flaming. That's just wasted fuel dumping out. And this is, this is what people say that have cars that don't flame. It would be nice for it to flame, but maybe we shall see. <laughs> And we're staying low for modification number four, and that is the aforementioned wheels. So I've got the raised wheels from my 350Z, which are actually really good wheels, and I'm very surprised that the majority of you guys like the swap. You think it works better than you thought it would, and I agree. The Nissan's wheels, being white, work on the white Chaser, and the Chaser's old wheels work on the Nissan as well. But it's not quite perfect, because these wheels are not the purest of whites, so they don't quite match. I would like, maybe, just an idea, some JR29s, Japanese racing wheels. I, I'm not a wheel man, so I didn't realize that JRs are reps of other wheels. These days, reps are actually not too bad. But you join me back up here for modification number five, and this is a big one that we mentioned earlier, the body kit. So this is a JZX 100 Toyota Chaser Tourer V. So it's got the additional lip around the front, down the sides, and on the rear. It's a bit of a kit in itself, and many of you really like the Tura V kit. And to be honest, it's really growing on me as well, especially now that I've got white wheels, it, it works much better. However, 
I've always lusted after the Vertex body kit. Most chasers tend to have Vertex or BN Sports. You've also got Shadow, that's another kit available for the chaser, and the Origin Labo. The Origin Labo kit is the biggest and bulkiest and wildest kit out there with a huge diffuser on the back. And then you've got the Shadow kit, which is, I think, what the Hot Wheels replica is replicating. But if you know your body kits, let me know in the comments which one you think I should get. Sorry about all the banging in the distance. It's Valentine's Day. But let's get low again for modification number six, and that is coilovers and camber setup. So I currently have, now forgive me for this pronunciation, Tyne, T-E-I-N, Tyne, Tyne coilovers. They are fully adjustable all around and the car is sat quite low compared to the wheel setup. The tires are a bit too high profile and they, they tend to rub. So maybe I should add some camber but lowering a chaser always adds a lot of stance and road presence to the car. And as I said, I've already got fully adjustable coilovers all around on this car. But you join me around the side of the car to talk about the side of the car and the blank canvas that is the side of the car. I'm reckoning a drift livery of some sorts, maybe even advertising Adam Seafest, which is on the 1st of May this year, but I've only got a couple of months to go. So maybe I should wait till after Adam Seafest and do a more Adam C style livery, but this will be something that will need to be professionally designed, even myself with a degree in graphic design I, I don't think I'd be able to put it off quite as well as a specialist will do. So maybe down the line, a drift style livery would work fantastically, but only once everything else is done because otherwise it will look rubbish. But here we go. When you talk of mods, a lot of you think about power gains, etc. And I've just washed the car, so it's now dripping. I didn't dry under the bonnet, whereas I normally do. This car is a two and a half litre straight six turbocharged 1JZ. Stage one, over 300 horsepower with a little turbo down below. And uh, when I say little turbo, I can barely see the thing. Uh, I've got a ram air filter on the car, but maybe down the road, I might end up with a nice little hybrid unit down there as well. It's pretty much ready to be upgraded, but at the moment it drives really nicely with no turbo lag. And I've actually been recommended to keep it at this figure, but I know you guys love to see massive numbers on YouTube, a thousand brake horsepower in my chaser, which is never going to happen. And whilst we're under here, I'd like to discuss modification number nine. A bit of advice might be useful on this project, but a lot of Skylines that I see and hear at shows, especially R33s, have the gorgeous note that comes from the result of an equal length manifold. And I'm wondering, if they don't already have one, which I doubt they do, how easy would it be to fabricate and build an equal length manifold for the 1JZ? And how amazing would it sound? This is what an R33 sounds like with an equal length manifold. Now imagine that from the 1JZ. This is just me spitballing in my mind, but I reckon that would almost make mine more unique than others. Oh, there's a red kite. Do you like a white chaser, mate? So that's just an idea of mine, but we come to modification number 10 which is by no means the biggest and boldest, but it's around the rear. So the rear end and it's differential and clutch. So I have an upgraded clutch on this car and that is what is also recommended for chasers too. However, I have the standard differential, which much like the 350Z, it's a viscous LSD. So sometimes it locks, sometimes it doesn't. It is good at going around roundabouts. Don't tell mum. But many people do upgrade the diffs on these cars. However, that can often affect the general driving style of how these ride, especially if they're welded or if you've got some kind of big racy diff in the car. So for now, I might actually keep 
the diff standard, but I've already got a good clutch uprated, maybe even ready for those mods that I told you about earlier in the video. So those were my top 10 mods for the Toyota Chaser and a bit of a shopping list as to what I want to do with mine. So let me know in the comments which you would like to see first. It will all be done in time for Adam Seafest. I'm just popping the bonnet again because on the discussion of turbochargers, I thought I'd let you listen to mine from a frontal point of view. You might have heard it fluttering away when I revved towards the back, but this car, when you're cruising along its normal road speeds, as soon as you lift off or even just go to change gear, this boy is a fluttery dude. So let's start it up again. So Mr. Little Spoolie Boy is just down there somewhere. Let's just try some revolutions for you. <laughs> But before I annoy too many of the locals, I'm going to conclude the video. So those were my little shopping list for this car. Side note, brakes, obviously power mods, brakes, brakes are important. I've got brakes, JBT brakes on the front, super brakes on the back, all been sorted, good. So let me know in the comments what you want to see first, and maybe if you have any other suggestions you would like me to do with this car. Once again, it will be at Adam Seafest on the 1st of May. All tickets for show cars and spectator tickets are in the link below. So I hope you enjoyed the video with the chaser follow me on instagram for the updates highlights and pictures of the meets and things that i do with my cars but for now thanks for watching